Well, more elite athletes have been wading into the controversial debate on whether transgender competitors should be able to compete in women's sport. Some transgender athletes say that calls to keep them out of the competition amount to hate speech. But those leading the campaign deny they're being transphobic, insisting that they want to protect the sport. Well, let's talk now to Olympic swimmer and silver medalist Sharon Davis, who is backing the Fair Play for Women campaign and joins me now. Uh, you have been called uh, by the transgender cyclist Rachel McKinnon, a transphobe and somebody who shares hate speech. What do you say to that? Well, I, I can't stop her saying whatever she wants to say. At the end of the day, you know, I'm still going to stick to my point of view is that unfortunately, if you're a transgender woman, you would have spent a fair bit of your life and puberty as a man or as a boy, and you would have the male benefits that that would give you. And that makes it an un, unfair playing field for, for other women. So I think this is just about sport. I don't think we need to get personal. I'm certainly not a transphobic, but if she wants to say that. As I say, I can't stop her. Um, but I'm here to try and fight for, for the rights of, of women, you know, that want to have a level playing field. Uh, she will argue, and others who support her will argue, that, that it isn't giving trans women uh, an unfair advantage, that they have to get their testosterone levels down to a certain amount before they're able to compete, that they have no yeah. natural advantage over women. Uh, why do you think they do? Well, I've already just kind of outlined the fact that they go through puberty. Um, if uh, a young boy goes through puberty, he has increased lung capacity, he has higher red blood cell count, he has a different skeletal system, a smaller, narrower pelvis, which helps certainly on a bike. Um, he has muscle memory from the testosterone that's been in his system. And the actual amount that they have to reduce their testosterone still makes it very high compared to the average woman. So there is a lot of residual values that carry on and therefore makes it unfair. You know, we don't see transgender women that that, that uh, transition over to men competing against men because they're at a disadvantage. And then the opposite happens with women, they end up with an advantage and that's what we're, we're not so happy about. So we just want to have open, clear debates. Um, we want to get the authorities on board. We want to get the IOC to look at this again. And we want to try and make sure that it's all based on medical facts. How do you think the authorities can uh, deal with this better? Do you, do you think they have dealt with it particularly well up to now? I think it's a bit, a bit fudged and I think people have kind of pushed it under the, the carpet and I think, you know, we don't really want this to become a problem before we have to sort it out. We'd like to try and head it off at the pass if we can. Um, there are some situations in America, in 17 states um, over there, uh, young boys are allowed to compete if they identify as women up to the age of 18 without any chemical intervention whatsoever. That, mean, that includes not reducing their testosterone. So those girls are at a massive disadvantage. Uh, there are a couple of um, examples of people being involved in combat sports where they have seriously hurt their opposition that's something we've got to talk about as well so I think it is a big a big issue um, I think we need to be very fair to the transgender community this is not about trying to cause problems I mean I think they go through what is a very challenging stage in their life and we need to support them but at the same time we also need to support women in sport there, had, there has been some speculation that, that there are more women in sport who would like to come out and talk about this, but that they're concerned about doing so because they fear that they will possibly yeah. lose sponsorship. What are your thoughts about yes. that? Have you, have you had conversations yeah. with people who've said, actually, I don't want to put my head above the parapet? Yeah, many, to be honest with you. Um, quite a lot of people, especially as you say, people that are competing at the moment, they're worried that their governing bodies will frown on it. They're worried that their sponsors will, will think it's not PC and they're not allowed to do this. And that's what I think is wrong with this debate. You know, why should we label someone that has a different view from you as transphobic? Um, I just think this is open, honest debate. Nobody is having a go at anyone. No one is being rude. I've tried very hard on my Twitter account to make sure that anyone that's rude, I, you know, verbally tell them off of being rude and, and say that I'm not involved. I'm not interested in you doing this. So I think it's it's, it's really important that we're we're just honest and open and that we move forward. So women's sport has taken such great strides in the last few years. It would be a real shame to see it take a step backwards. Mm. No, no transgender uh, athletes have made it, have they, for, for the Olympics, qualified for the Olympics, let alone a medal. So I suppose some would say that maybe they aren't getting the yeah. advantages. Well, yes, yeah, some would say that, wouldn't they? But ultimately, um, it was at 2016, the rules were changed from two years that you had to have lower testosterone to only one year. So I think there's a lot of talk about people that will be involved in the 2020 Olympic Games. There's a volleyball player in particular um, that, that, that actually at the moment that's doing incredibly well. But, you know, there is a definite physical advantage to her. And that is our, our whole point. Do you think this is going to put women off? You're saying that, that, that some women in sport are afraid to speak out. 
do you think, as you say, you know, there's been such great strides in women's sport over the last few years. Do you think that there's the potential knock-on effect of young girls not necessarily wanting to take part in some sports? Yeah. Yes, yeah, certainly. Scholarships in America are being lost at the moment from young girls, which makes it very difficult for them. I think, you know, it does put them in a, in a difficult position. I think, obviously, a lot of people like myself have actually come out. Paula Radcliffe, Nicola Adams, uh, Sally Gunnell. I mean, Daley Thompson, who I spoke to. And actually, just about everyone I speak to has the same opinion. And in fact, most people that, that think about it sensibly have the same opinion. So I, I don't think that there's this, this wave of hate or rage or goodness knows not. I just think we need to be grown up about this really and look at all the medical facts. Um, there's actually been a couple of people, as I mentioned, in have been seriously hurt and, and that, that's dangerous. Okay, Sharon Davis, good to talk to you. Thanks so much for joining us today.